Hey guys, my name's Matt and welcome to the Game Gengo vocab series. In this video we're going to be checking out a little bit more of Fire Emblem Engage. I'm going to be breaking down absolutely all of the Japanese that we come across with a real focus on the vocabulary. So whether you're a complete beginner or even an advanced level student you'll be able to get something out of this video. We're going to be covering a broad range of language from N5 level all the way to N1 and beyond. The goal of this video series really is to kind of help you learn Japanese without feeling the need to study, right? To kind of trick yourself into learning immerse in Japanese but removing the headache of going through it yourself. With just this video alone we're going to be covering over 160 pieces of vocabulary with 77 of those being completely new even if you've watched every video in this playlist. Bringing our total vocabulary that we've covered so far to 2,909. 17% of the entire JLPT. If you like this video make sure to like, subscribe and come join us in the Game Gengo Discord community on Patreon. So starting things off, we awake in this strange looking room and our main character here says kokoa. So this is a pretty simple sentence. Koko just means here and wa as for it's the topic marker. So as for here. So she's kind of asking a question. Where is this place? That kind of thing. Koko. Me akerareta. Me o akerareta. Me is just very simply your eyes, and then o is now the object marker, so we're doing something to our eyes, and it's me o akeru, that is to open, right? But here it's in the passive form, akerareta, was opened. So kind of like, what? You opened your eyes? Now that's a weird literal translation, <laughs> you opened your eyes? Here just simply referring to the fact that you've awoken. Me, me o akerareta. We're in a very strange place, almost like a palace or a temple. We have this kind of royal sheet over us, you know, that kind of the mosquito net type thing, you know, something that a princess would have or something. I'm not really too sure what's going on here, but she says, Anata tachi wa? So here again, she hasn't finished what she's saying. She hasn't finished the sentence, but Anata is just you. This is something we learned in the previous video. And then Tachi is the pluralizing suffix. So it turns you into kind of you guys, right? More than one. So Anata Tachi, you guys wa as for. So as for you guys, again, who are you guys, right? She's not directly saying Anata Tachi wa dare desu ka? Koko wa doko desu ka? She's not saying the full sentence. She's kind of being cut off, right? Because it's pretty obvious what she's saying. Here she's saying Anata Tachi wa as for you guys, who are you guys? And then the girl here says, Anatawa. So, Anata we know is you, wa as for. But here, there's no longer that dot, dot, dot. She's not asking a question. She has a very clear, strong exclamation mark at the end. So, here, she's being a little bit more assertive. You are, right? So, as for you, you are. So, this is kind of like in English, uh, you're. So, she's showing surprise at who you are. Anatawa. And now she tells us who we are and she says Shinryu Ryuru sama desu ka? Although she doesn't say the Ryuru because that's your character's name. So she just says Shinryu sama desu ka? Now this is a really really important piece of language for Fire Emblem and also even things like Final Fantasy. This first word here, Shinryu. Literally if we were to have a look at the kanji, it's the kanji for God and then the kanji for Dragon. So she's literally calling you a God Dragon. <laughs> so your God Dragon Ryuru. Now this God Dragon, the Shinryu, in the English version is known as a Divine Dragon. Now these are generally people who can actually transform into Two dragons. This kanji Shinryu can also be read as actually Shenlong. Uh, this is the dragon in Dragon Ball Z, right? Shenron. <laughs> uh, so this is a pretty interesting kanji right here, the god of dragons. So in Fire Emblem though this is just kind of like an old race. They don't exist in all Fire Emblem games but they have for a long time and they're kind of like this ancient dragon people. So here the divine dragon Shinryu Sama here is referring to the person in an honorific way. So 
we can see already that the girl with the blue and the red's hair's position is in a kind of higher position than these two because they're using summer. This puts the person really high up when you put summer at the end of someone's name. And this is why in Japanese culture and society it's very polite to add this at the end of someone's name, especially when you're like talking with someone like a customer or a client or something. Putting summer, you put them up. So you're kind of, you know, putting them in a very honorable position. And that's what's being done here. So, Shinryu sama deska. Deska is just a very simple way of asking a question. So, are you the divine dragon? Shinryu sama deska? Shinryu sama desu ne? And then the other guy, I think a boy character, um, he says the exact same sentence, but he says just one thing different. He says, Shinryu sama desu ne? So, the last part, instead of the ka, he has a ne. And this changes the sentence completely. Instead of a, are you the divine dragon? He says, you're the divine dragon, right? So you see the feeling of the sentence is very, very different if you have the deska or desne at the end. Desne is kind of asking for confirmation rather than deska, because that's for questions. So here, you're the divine dragon, right? Shinryu-sama-desne? <laughs> And this girl's kind of surprised and she backs off a little bit and she says, Nanto. So Nanto is an interesting piece of language as we can have a look here in the Lorenzi's Jisho. Um, this is the dictionary that I'm going to be using for this video. It's a very, very useful free dictionary that you can use. Um, it's got ranking levels of JLPT usefulness and different categories like anime, drama, news, Wikipedia. Very, very useful, uh, a very nice way of kind of gauging the importance of a word and actually having a look at how often it's used. Here we can see that Nanto is an N1 piece of language, but it's relatively common. It's top 3,000, top 4,000 in anime, drama, and news, and in Wikipedia, top 13,000. And this is pretty clear because this is a more of a conversational piece of language, something you would say in dialogue, but not something you would write, for example, on a Wikipedia page. And this is showing that surprise. So what? How? Oh my! That type of feeling. So really showing surprise to the situation. So she's probably surprised that she's awake. Nanto. Ma Nanto. And then the boy repeats the same thing. So she, he's, he's got maybe like a younger brother perhaps. He's repeating the same thing the girl's saying all the time. So he's like, what? What? No way. Ma Nanto. <gasps> <laughs> okay, we can see a little bit of comedy here in the way that they're kind of acting. Um, so they kind of exclaim to each other, Shinryu sama ga omezame ni narimashita. So we know the Shinryu sama ga means that the divine dragon did something. And what did they do? Because this ga particle really marks the subject of a sentence, the kind of doer of the action. They omezame ni narimashita. Now, mezameru, or just here, mezame, this is to wake up, right? To open up your eyes. This is kind of like the noun. We can actually see it here in the word, me is your eyes. And then, sameru, here, mezameru, but just by itself, sameru, is to kind of come to your senses to something, to kind of wake up, right? So your eyes have woken up. So, okay, we see that is a noun, mezameru, that's to wake up. But we can see before and at the end, we have some weird pieces of language, o and ni narimashita. Now, this is very simply just the keigo way of saying suru, shita. I believe covered in my N4 grammar video, but if you want to turn just suru, to do, into keigo, right? Remember, they're speaking in keigo. We already see they use sama and all that kind of stuff. They're being very respectful. Well, here, to talk of my actions, they can't say mezameta, right? Because that's kind of a little bit casual. So here they're using honorific language. O Mezame ni narimashita. This o ni naru is in replace of suru. That's it. So you can turn any verb into the keigo version. Just instead of saying suru or anything like that, just turn the verb into the mas stem form. So you're dropping the mas and then do o in front and then ni narimashita or ni naru at the end. And that just makes it keigo. So congratulations, you've learned some difficult keigo. That's a very difficult language for a lot of people. Keigo is a very challenging thing for a lot of Japanese students and some Japanese people as well. <laughs> So, eh, um.
まったく二人とも想像しお目覚めになったなどそのような嘘を Okay, we're finally outside and we have this new character here. His name is Vandore. And Vandore says, Mataku, Futari Tomo, Sozo Shi. Mataku here simply in the third definition just kind of means a good grief. This is almost having a little bit of a exasperation at the situation, kind of almost complaining, right? Jeez, that kind of thing. That's how I would personally translate it. Like, ah,、oh, jeez, good grief. Mataku. Futari Tomo just means two people, as we can see both of the people.、Uh, futari here, usually in kanji, just two people, and then Tomo at the end. Here, kind of expressing both of the people. So, G's both of you, and then he says, Sozo Shi. And this word here is kind of to be noisy, boisterous, loud, right? Kind of in a kind of clamorous, right? You can see kind of making lots of noise, right? That's here, this sozo shi. A relatively high level piece of vocabulary here at the N2 level. It's kind of a higher level version of like urusai, right? In that kind of way. So here, you, both of you G's are being very, very noisy and loud. Now, it's very interesting. We can already see a difference in kind of the character dynamics here. Notice how he's just using the adjective by itself. He is not speaking in keigo, he's not speaking politely, he's speaking very blunt and straightforward. So clearly, the power dynamics here is the person who's speaking is in a higher position than these two, perhaps even some sort of boss position, right? Because we just saw them using keigo, but here he's just speaking very plainly. So, geez, both of you guys are making a racket. And then the second line he says, O me zame ni natta nado, sono yo na uso. So we know omezame ni naru just means to awaken in a kind of kegel way of speaking, a polite way of speaking. But then we have this nado. Nado here is very much definition number three, the likes of. And as we can see in the explanation, it lessens the significance or value of the previous word or the previous thing that you've said.、And、this is very, very important because this is exactly what he's actually saying. If we have a look at the rest of the sentence, sono yo na uso. Sono yona here is a na adjective saying that kind of, right? That sort of. Sono that yona is a na adjective like that, so like that. Sono yona, and then uso. This is a lie. So a lie like that. Sono yona uso o. And again, we have the o particle here kind of cutting off. So we know we're doing something, probably saying a lie, right? That type of thing. But the saying part, we already know because it's pretty clear that's what he's talking about. So if we have a look at the whole sentence, o me zame ni natta nado, things like awakening, sono yo na uso, a lie like that, o. And then probably like don't say is probably what he's going to say, but he's kind of cutting himself off. So, geez, both of you guys are so noisy. A lie like such a thing like that they've awakened. Don't tell such a lie. Mataku, Futari tomo sozo shi. O me zame ni natta nado, sono yo na uso. <laughs> And we have the youngest old guy I've ever seen. <laughs> Here, Vandore says, Shindu, Ryuru sama. So he's surprised. Again, you know, the divine dragon, Ryuru. And immediately he's switching to Keigo, right? Here we have the sama. So he's clearly some sort of knight. Perhaps I'm getting the vibes like these are kind of like the protectors of the divine dragon or something, and they've been waiting for it to awaken or something like that. I'm not sure. <gasps> So, Korewa, as for this, so this is, and then we have a new piece of language, Kiseki. And Kiseki is very simply the word for a miracle. So, this is a very, very useful piece of language. Top two, five thousand, very useful piece of language. So, this, this is a miracle, that kind of thing. Korewa, Kiseki da. And the da is just being really exclamatory, like saying, stating something very strongly. This is a miracle. Yomuya, honto ni o mezame ni narare te iru to wa. So, if this guy speaks in a very keigo way, so he's quite a difficult one, this guy's going to be a bit of a challenge for、uh, you know, beginners and things like that. So, first we have yomoya. So, we can see that this can be used to either say surely dun 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 or surely not dun 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 if it's used in a negative sentence. But here it's more like surely. So, surely yomoya. 
Hontoni, truly or really. This is an absolutely essential piece of Japanese top 500, right? You probably already know this. Hontoni is like really, right? This is how you make something stronger, like very, right? Uh, Hontoni is very, very common, this piece of language. So truly, Hontoni, and then we have Omezame ni narare teiru to wa. So we know that omezame ni naru is to awaken. Here hits in the kind of continuous passive form. So, you know, you're awakened and it's kind of in this continuous state. And then we have this towa. This is a very nifty piece of language here. This is kind of like quoting something. As we can see in definition number two, it kind of quotes thoughts or speech. And what it's quoting here is everything that comes before it. Surely they're not really awakened. And then this towa is almost like to think. To think that you truly have awakened. That would be how you would translate this bottom sentence here. This is a miracle. To think that truly you have awakened. Boom, and then hit with a whole bunch of challenging Japanese here. So, ah. Is kind of like a yeah. Then we have sono me, so we know that, those eyes. Here it's hiraku to open, so it's exactly the same as aku, it's a kind of different way of saying it, same kind of thing, same kind of meaning. But here, sono me ga hirakare teiru, so it is opened. And then we have this really interesting piece of language here, gyokugan. Now this is a pretty tough piece of language right here. As we can see, there is no information on it whatsoever. No rankings, no scores, no JLPT level. <laughs> Definitely no JLPT level. Here, Gyokugan, the only translation we have is Imperial Face. Now, this makes no sense. There's a reason for it, and it's because it's just a really rare piece of language. So generally what I would do in this situation is I would actually look up the word in Japanese on Google or something, and just kind of have a look at what the Japanese definitions are. This will often clear up any problems you have understanding. Um, it's really useful, especially if you use something like Yomi-chan or Tenten, a browser extension. You can just simply highlight your mouse over the definitions and you can read as you go along. So you can learn Japanese as you look up definitions. It's really useful. So let's do that right now just to kind of check it out. So here just simply typing the word into Google we can see a really useful definition here from Kotobank JP. This is a very nice website for getting Japanese definitions sometimes. And we can see here that there are two different definitions and it's pretty clear once you actually have a look at what it means. So here definition number one is definitely what we're looking at here. Utsukushi kao, a beautiful face. So that's pretty easy. Not an imperial face, it's a beautiful face. Why didn't they give that definition in the dictionary? I don't know. But if we have a look at the second definition, we can see here that, you know, it's the face of the emperor. So we can see here that it's this kind of imperial face, right? The face of an emperor. And then even more interesting, we can actually see the next little bit of information, Ryugan, the face of a dragon. And that actually implies imperialness which is very interesting because there is a kind of imperialness to dragons right like very very common thing in kind of mythology and stuff like that so very very interesting there's this connection here with you know mythology and japanese history here um even in just in this expression right now um we also have that it's just the face of someone high class, right? So a beautiful, elegant, high class face. So I'm guessing that he would have used a different sentence if I picked the guy as my main character. I'm really curious. I want to find out what he says. So, gyokugan, a beautiful face. So, ah, sono me ga hirakare teiru gyokugan o. So doing something to this beautiful face where the eyes are awakening. Then we have a really challenging sentence at the bottom here. So watashi no dai. We know that watashi means I. So watashi is his pronoun that he's using to refer to himself. Watashi no dai. So this is an interesting piece of language because as we can see, there are lots of different ways of using this. There are nine different definitions. However, my guess of what he's referring to here is he's talking about his generation. From my guess so far, just like what's going on. We know the main character is an ancient dragon. We know these guys seem to be watching us. They're surprised that they were that we're awake. So obviously they're kind of paying attention to when we're going to awaken. So it looks like they've been doing this for a long time, right? Waiting for this kind of ancient dragon to awaken. It's a bit weird that they were literally hovering over me, <laughs> but that seems to be, um, you know, what they're doing here. So my guess here is this is talking about a generation. As we can see, for example, you know, 
Definition number seven, a counter of generations as in inheritors to a throne or something like that, right? So perhaps they've inherited this duty to kind of look after um, the dragon and keep an eye on when they wake up, right? So that's what I'm guessing here. My generation. no dai de. So de marks the spot. It's kind of, this is where the action takes place. So at my generation. Then we have haiken suru. This is some more keigo. This time we can see it's humble, polite speech. So kenjo go and tene go. And this is a way of just saying miru, but in a more keigo way, right? So here he's almost being humble to see something, to have the honor in a way of seeing something, right? Haiken here is that way of saying miru at an end to piece of language. So as you can see, keigo is quite challenging because they often have verbs that replace normal verbs. This is the keigo way, the kenjo go way, the humble keigo way of referring to miru, to look. So this word in itself almost belittles yourself and to have the, the honor of being able to see something, haiken suru. Now here, haiken suru is now modifying the next word, eio. So this is the honor. So the honor to see, haiken suru eio. Oh, and then finally, an absolutely ridiculously hard word here at the end one level, tamawaru. And this is kind of to be honored to have something to be bestowed upon, right? So here, to be bestowed upon the honor of being able to see you, right? With my generation, to see the beautiful face of you waking up. So already it's pretty cheesy, right? The line's pretty cheesy. So this Fire Emblem, I'm already getting a feeling that it's a little bit more on the comedy side of things. It's not taking itself too seriously. So here, ah. Such a thing to be bestowed the honor of in my generation being able to see the awakening eyes of such a beautiful face. A little bit over the top, <laughs> but hey, that's a good way of uh, giving someone a compliment. So next time you see your partner waking up, <laughs> make sure to use this line on them and they will be <laughs> very flattered. <laughs> oh. Anatawa. So again, asking who are you? Um, so this is again kind of the sentence is being cut off, and we can see that here with the dot dot dot. You are that kind of thing. Anatawa. Moshiwake gozaimasen. Tsui torimida shite shimaimashite. Now he's kind of getting his composure a little bit and he says, Moshiwake gozaimasen. And this is actually a really useful expression. Moshiwake nai, or here, Moshiwake gozaimasen, is just a kind of way of apologizing, but it's a very strong way, right? You may have learnt, ah, sumimasen, or gomen nasai, right? This kind of way of saying, I'm sorry. But this is even stronger. And we can see this if we break down the actual expression itself, why this is a little bit more of a, a stronger way of apologizing. When you're really like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, this is the one that you would use. Morsu is to say. Wake is like reasoning, logic, or an excuse. And then gozaimasen is the polite way of saying that something doesn't exist. So, put it all together, there is no way, no reason that I could say it's inexcusable, right? I'm so sorry, right? I, there's nothing I could say to apologize, I'm so sorry. That's all hidden here in this phrase. Moshiwake nai, or moshiwake gozaimasen. Very useful expression. So here, I'm very sorry. And in the second line, he says, Tsui torimidashite shimaimashite. So, Tsui is a really interesting piece of language that expresses a lack of intention in something, right? Doing something without realizing, without meaning to, uh, maybe sometimes accidentally, right? Against your better judgment. Um, but it could also mean just right now as well. But here it's definitely definition number three, right? I accidentally did something. So, here he's like, oh, I unintentionally, without meaning to. Tsui torimidashite shimaimashite. So here we have torimidasu. This is a pretty rare piece of language. It's not in the JLPT. And this is to lose one's composure. So we unintentionally lost my composure. This is this tsui torimidashite. But the following part of the sentence, we have shimaimashite. So this is the same thing as shimaimashita, but it's in the TEF form. And shimao is when you do something accidentally without meaning to or to have completely done something. So in this sentence, we're really seeing the emphasis on doing something without meaning to. We have both tsui expressing this and shimaimashita expressing this, right? So really regretfully, unintentionally regretfully, 
I lost my composure. So, ooh, it's absolutely inexcusable. I accidentally lost my composure. Okay, so it looks like we have some Jiko Shou guys, some uh, self-introductions now. Finally, we're getting to know each other. He says, Watashi wa, so as for me. And then we have this big combination of numbers. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. So we have Dai Sanju ni Dai Me. The first Dai here is just a very easy piece of language. It's counting the ordinal numbers. Don't worry about that. It's just saying number, right? Number and then he'll say the number afterwards, right? You often see this die in front of it, almost like in English where you see like the hash to say number in the same kind of way. So here, dai sanju ni, three ten two, this is 32, right? Three ten two, thirty two 32, sanju ni dai me. And this is now marking what generation? So we were correct in what we looked at before with the Dai expressing the generation, my generation. And here, Dai Me is the nth generation. So the number 32nd generation. So the nd generation, 32nd generation. That's what here the Dai Me is doing. So as for me, I am the 32nd generation. And generation what? Well, that's coming in the next part. Tornado to become or to be, and then what is it that it is? It's this thing in the brackets. So he is a Ryu no Moribito. So we're becoming very familiar with all things dragons uh, here. Ryu for the dragon, we saw that in the previous episode. Ryu no Moribito, this is a guard or a watchman. Really interestingly though, we can see that it says that it's an archaic way of saying this. This is actually a different reading to what he just said. He didn't say Mamoribito. He just said, Moribito. This reading is commonly seen in fantasy settings. So even though this reading, Moribito, doesn't appear in any of the dictionaries, that's how it's being used here. I am the 32nd generation dragon protector, or the watchman of the dragon. And in the second sentence, Nao Vandore to Moshimas. Na is just short for Namae, a name. Often you'll see it used just by itself in this one kanji here. So, Na o. And then what are we calling the name? Vandore. That's his name, Vandore. And this is expressed with to mo shimasu. We saw previously that the to particle quotes something, so quoting what he's called. And then mo here is an N4 piece of language. It's the humble Kenjogo way of saying iu, to say. So if you wanted to introduce yourself normally, obviously you could just say your name and then des, right? I am Matt, right? Matto des. I'm Matt. But you could say I'm called Matt, right? Matto to iu or Matto to imas. I'm called Matt. But here, if you want to put yourself down in position, so you're being humble, known as Kenjogo, this would be Morsu. So after your name, just follow it with the to particle, quoting your name, and then Morsu to be humble. Matto to moshimas. I am called Matthew. So that's what he's saying here. So he's being very humble. My name is Vandore. I am the 32nd generation dragon protector. My name is Vandore. Vandore so the main character referred to Vandore as Vandore-san. This makes it a little bit more polite, and he's acting quite odd to this, like, oh, right, calling him son. The reason why is because she's being polite towards him, but he's already putting himself down in a humble situation, right? He's like her servant, right? He works for her, right? She's way above him. And so using son, he feels kind of uncomfortable with. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so that's what he's saying right here. Nante o sore oi. Nante very simply just means what or how, often seen when you kind of have surprise, like what kind of how or sore oi. 
Here we can see meaning awesome or even discourteous. This is a little bit of a tricky piece of language and it's pretty rare so it's not something you necessarily must know. But here we can see the first part, or sore, actually has some other kanji that are used. This one up the top actually means fearful, right? Or sore oi means there are many fears. Something that is whoa, 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 too awesome or inspiring or whoa, 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 too discourteous, right? That type of thing. However, still this doesn't quite fit the situation. He's not saying, whoa, that's too amazing. And he's not saying, whoa, you're being too rude. So in this situation, it doesn't really fit the context. So again, I would just quickly check this up on Google in Japanese and have a look and see what the Japanese definition says. This time we're having a look at a definition from gu.ne.jp, one of my personal favorite dictionaries online uh, for Japanese explanations. And we can see here, it's a little bit more clearly. Um, the first one here, we can see that it is something that is very rude, that there is no excuse, but mm, that's a little bit odd. In this situation, definition number two is much more useful. Wagami ni wa arigataku. So to be very thankful towards oneself, but motai nai. It's kind of a waste. So he's very thankful that she's saying son, being polite to him, but it's a waste, motai nai. So kind of like saying, you know, oh, you don't need to do that. That is, you know, that's going too far. Please, you don't need to use son with me. Just call me vandore. And so he says in the second part, Doka, Vandore to oyobi kudasai. Doka is being polite in Tenego just to say please. So please, Vandore, that's his name, please Vandore to. So again, we're quoting something, and then we have oyobi kudasai. Yobu is a very simple verb just to be to call someone, but he's using the o prefix in front of it, that makes it polite. And then kudasai, please. So please call me. And then what is he asking her to call him? That's marked by the to particle. Vandore. So please just call me Vandore. So oh, that is too gracious, that is too kind. Please just call me Vandore. Vandore san. Vandore to yobi kudasai. Ne, Vandore san. Honto ni shinryu sama okitata desho? Ne, Vandore san. So the first part, ne, is just kind of getting attention. Definition number one or number two, kind of like right or hey. So hey, Vandore san. Hey, Vandore. Hontoni, truly, Shinryu sama, okiteta desho? And okiru is just the verb to wake up. This is the normal verb that you would use at a beginner level to say to wake up. This is something you learn at the N5. As we can see, it's a very, very useful piece of language. Top 1000 anime and drama. And it's pretty common as well in the other things as well, but perhaps not the news. <laughs> but this is the verb that you need to use whenever you say get up in the morning. So, okiteta, this is short for okiteita. That means to have woken up. And then desho, right? So desho, we can see, is just a short version of desho. So it seems right, don't you agree? So if we put all of this together, ne vandore san, hey vandore, honto ni shinryu sama okiteta desho? Shinryu sama really did wake up, right? Ne vandore san, honto ni shinryu sama okiteta desho? Boku tachi, uso nanka tsuite nai yo. Boktachi, uso nanka tsuite nai yo. So now we can actually see the usage that we were looking at before of like how to actually say a lie. The verb of saying we didn't actually see, it was kind of cut off with the dot dot dot. So let's take a look. So, bokutachi, us. Now again, we see here the boku referring to the male language. So he's a boy character here, um, or at least he kind of has that kind of personality. And then tachi is the pluralizing suffix. So he's saying us. But as we saw in the previous episode, you don't have to match the pronoun to everyone in the group when you're referring to them. Here, he is a boku. So he refers to himself as boku. And then boku tachi is us. And you can have any kind of gender in the group that you're referring to. So I could say ore tachi, right? Us. But there could still be girls in my group. Group, it's just whatever pronoun you use for yourself, that's what you use. So that's what he uses here, bokutachi. And then we have uso nanka tsuite nai yo. Uso, we know, is a lie. Nanka, things like tsuite nai. Tsuku is the verb to let out, as in to tell a lie, to let out a lie. So normally you might see this as like uso o tsuku, or even uso tsuki. That's a person who does lies. Or just simply usotsuku, to tell a lie. You don't necessarily have to always have the or particle marking what you say, right? You could just combine them together. And so here we can see that tsuku is apparently a very common word 
Anime Top 500, Wiki Top 500, so a very, very useful piece of language. However, the actual kanji is in the N1 level. We can see here, kind of for haku, that same kind of kanji for tsuku. Now, this is to breathe out, to let out, to tell out, to throw up sometimes as well, but here just to let out a lie, to tell a lie. Uso nanka, things like a lie, tsuite nai. I didn't say. And then yo is just being really emphatic. So we didn't do anything like say lies. So we know anatatachi, you guys, wa as for you guys, and now saki. This means a short while ago or a moment ago, just now. This is referring to an event that just happened recently. So you guys are recently dun 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 dun. So we don't know what that nor particle is attached to, but it's probably hitotachi or something like that, right? The people from before. Anatatachi wa saki no. You're the guys from before. Anatatachi wa saki no. Ah, hai. Sumimasen. Saki hodo wa odoroki no amari. Shiko shoukai mo sezu. Man, the artwork is so nice. I really like the graphics in this game. Ha, hai. Sumimasen. So, hai. This is just him stuttering, saying, hi, that is correct. Very useful piece of language right here. You could almost put this in the top 10, perhaps, most useful words. Uh, hi, yes, that's correct. So, uh, yeah, sumimasen, I apologize, or I beg your pardon. So, yes, I'm very sorry. And then the second line, he says, saki hodo wa odoroki no amari, jiko shoukai mo sezu. Saki hodo here is the exact same thing as the saki that we saw before. It's just a little bit slightly different expression. Very, very similar to saki, right? Saki hodo wa, so as for just a little bit ago, odoroki no amari. So odoroku is to be surprised at something. Here it's the noun. So odoroki, the noun for surprise or amazement. So saki hodo wa, as for before, odoroki no amari. Now, Amari we've actually covered in one of the previous JLPT N3 grammar videos, and this is an interesting piece of language. It can often be to be the remainder of something, but it can also be to do something too much, and that's very much the use here. Something not Amari is to do something so much, as you can see, that you're overwhelmed, right? You get carried away. So here, as for before, he got way too carried away with being surprised, amazed. So, the second clause in the sentence. Jiko shoukai mo sezu. Jiko shoukai finally is the word for a self-introduction. This is an incredibly useful piece of language, even though it's not ranked very highly, because this is your self-introduction. This is the word. Jiko is oneself, and shoukai is to introduce. So, a self-introduction. Jiko shoukai. But here, it's jiko shoukai mo sezu. So mo is just the more particle, even, and then sezu is the negative continuative form of suru. Don't worry about what that means, it just means without doing, right? You can actually see that, right? Without the negative and then doing the continuous. That's why it's the negative continuative form. <laughs> so here, sezu is the same as sezu ni, right? Without doing. So without even doing my jiko shoukai, without even giving myself introduction. So yes, I'm very, very sorry. As for before, I was overcome with surprise. I didn't even do my self-introduction. So we already know most of the language in this long sentence. Boku wa, as for me, dai sanju sandai, so I am this time the 33rd generation, ryu no moribito. So he's the 33rd generation of dragon protectors, kuran desu. I am kuran, kind of like clan, kuran, interesting name. So kuran desu. And then he says, dozo omishiri okio. Now this is a little bit more difficult. Dozo is a super useful piece of language here in the top 500. And this can be kind of please, I beg of you, so please do something. But if we actually have a look at some further definitions, we can see that it has more to it than just that. For example, by all means, certainly go ahead. So it's almost giving permission, right? When giving permission or accepting a request. But it can even be just when you're handing something to someone. Here you are, dozo. And it can also be to give in children's language. In a way, it's kind of like giving permission 
permission for something, right? Where they're giving permission for someone to do something, please do this, or by all means do this, or even giving permission when you're giving someone, right? Here you are, you can have this, right? Giving permission in a way. And the same thing for a kid, when you give it to them, right? Dozo, it's kind of like giving something, right? So this dozo is a very, very, very useful piece of language. And here he's kind of giving the following part, or he's kind of imploring the following part. Dozo. Or mi shiri okiyo. So this is a tough expression because when you look at it in a dictionary, it doesn't give you the results whatsoever. But we can see a breakdown. This is o, so the polite prefix. Mi shiri, this is to kind of get to know something. Oki, to do something in advance. And then o, the particle for the o. But what does this actually mean? <laughs> in this situation, again, I would really refer to just Google. Just type this in Google and you'll probably get the results very, very quickly. And so straight away, we can already see two really useful resources. The first one is a suggested one from JP Indido. This is actually a job searching network. So they're kind of introducing this kind of language that you might use in a job interview, perhaps. So we can see in this definition that it says that when you want someone to remember your name and your face, this is a polite expression that you use. And we can see that backed up again in the Weblio example here where it says the exact same thing although in a different way to express the, the desire for someone to put into memory your name or face. So pretty clear that's what this omishiri oki o is being used as. And this is actually a short form of omishiri oki kudasai but instead of the kudasai it just has the o. Sometimes this is done, uh, actually, with the, the Star Wars, may the force be with you, they actually do the same thing. Okay, so we've got a little bit of the two clowns from Final Fantasy IX type thing going on here, where we have two people named very similar things. And so here she says, Onajiku dai sanju sandai, ryu no moribito furan desu. So onajiku just means in the same way. And then we have dai sanju sandai. So again, the 33rd generation. So she is in the same generation as the boy. Ryu no moribito, so the defender of the dragon, furan desu. And Furan is now her name, so the boy was called Kuran, and the girl is called Furan. <laughs> so this is kind of like Fran in a way. Also a flan, <laughs> a caramel custard, so it's kind of a cute name. Uh, but I'd kind of look at it as like Fran. I'm not sure what she's called in the English version, but in Japanese it's Fran and Cran. That's the name of these two guys. So I'm the same thing, Onajiku, Dai Sanju Sandai. I'm the 33rd generation, Ryu no Mamoribito, the defender of the dragon, Furan desu. My name's Flan. And then she says, Kuran no Futago no Imoto nan desu yo. So, Kuran no clan something, and then we have this new word, Futago. You may have already picked up on this, but they are twins. They look very, very similar to each other, and that's the word here in Japanese, Futago. The first kanji kind of represents a pair, and then Go is child, Ko. So, children who are of a pair, twins. So, Futago no Imoto nan desu yo. And Imoto is just the word for a younger sister. So, interestingly, she's the younger sister of the boy. I almost would have guessed that she's the older sister for some reason. Maybe because she always spoke first or something like that. But they're going with the younger sister here. So, she is the younger sister in the twins. Futago no Imoto nan desu. It is the case. So, she's explaining, right? The nanda explaining. Nan desu yo. So, she's being a little bit more affirmative. I am the younger twin sister of Kuran. Ooh, we almost know all of the language in this one as well. Anata-sama ga omezame ni naru no o. So we know all of the language here. Anata-sama, you speaking to her in an honorific way. Ga, so you are doing something. Omezame ni naru, to wake up. No o, so doing something to the thing of her waking up. And then we have zuto, jito, omachi shite orimashita. So zuto is a really useful piece of language just to express doing something for a really long time, almost like continuously or the whole time. So she's been doing something for a very long period of time, expressed here with zuto. And then we have jito. This is now expressing doing something without any motion, like completely still. As we can see in definition number one, motionlessly or still. 
It's an onomatopoeia word. And we can actually see that the use right here where it's like the ji to, this is a little bit more emphatic. So we can actually see that in the definition for number one. So this is just completely still. This is often used when someone stares at you, right? Completely still. That would also be here. Ji to would be used or ji to. Right. So here, zuto for the whole time, jito, completely still, omachi shite orimashita. So matsu just means to wait, but here it's being used in the kind of very polite keigo way. So here, let's just break this down a little bit. Omachi shite, so o is the polite prefix, omachi shite, so we're doing something. And now we actually have the keigo, the honorific way of using teiru or teimas. Here, te orimas. This is actually a really cool thing about the dictionary that I'm using for this video, Lorenzi's Jisho, because it actually breaks down the entire conjunction of the word that you look up whenever you look it up. So for example, I just searched for shite orimashita, and it came up with this breakdown of the conjunction. Very useful for beginners. So here we can see suru, then put in the conjunctive shite, then attached with shite oru. This is the polite form of shite iru, to be doing. Right? So, shite oru, then shite orimas to make it polite, and then shite orimashita, so the past tense form. So here it is polite, honorific language to say that I was waiting. And how was I waiting? Zuto, jito, for a long time without moving. <laughs> so it's kind of creepy. <laughs> and perhaps that's why they were above her when they woke up. <laughs> Maybe they was looking at her the whole time <laughs> while she was sleeping, just waiting <laughs> it's a bit creepy but here that's what she says that she was waiting the whole time for her to wake up and now we can finally see them together as a group and he says Ware ware is just a way of saying we. This is a little bit more of a formal way of talking or an old man way of talking, right? You would never imagine the girl or the boy using ware ware. <laughs> it's really weird. But here, this is kind of a an old man-ish character, even though he looks like the youngest old man I've ever seen. <laughs> um, here, he is an old man, so he's saying ware ware, us. Then, ryu no moribito wa, so as for the defenders of the dragon, anata sama, anata is you, while it's normally written in hiragana, it is here used in kanji, which is still pretty common as well. So anata-sama, so here referring to you in an honorable way, no shugosha. And this very simply is the word for a guardian. Now this is a pretty rare word uh, when you look at it in the scale of language, right, in all the different situations. This is something you will see in video games, but you probably won't see anywhere else, right? You probably won't learn this in any other learning resource available in the entire world, uh, unless you learn this through video games or maybe like fantasy novels or something like that. Um, but shugo is just to guard, to protect something, and then sha is a person. So here, the guardian, the person who protects you. Anata-sama no shugosha. So putting it all together, we are the defenders of the dragon. We are your guardians. Oh, big sentence here, so let's break it all down. So, initiye is a pretty rare piece of language at the N1 level to mean kind of ancient, of ancient times. Initiye no jidai, here being the period or the era of ancient times, so kind of ancient era, ancient days. Initiye no jidai yori, this can be from or since. So, since the ancient times, and then we have dai gawari. So, we know dai is kind of like the generations. But here, it's actually more like a substitute. And kawaru is to change, almost to like replace over. When used with this kanji, it's kind of to swap something over, to replace one thing for another. So to replace, to substitute one for another. As we can see in the definition, taking over, to substitute of one person for another, exactly. <laughs> um, so this is kind of since the ancient times, taking over for one another, or Tsuzuke nagara. Tsuzuku is to continue or tsuzukeru here, and then nagara is while, during or as. Now this as is kind of a nice one because as we continue to replace one another since ancient times, so to kind of you know switch the roles of being a guardian over and over again throughout history, anata sama ga 
お目覚めになる時をお待ちしていたのです。So we know this whole clause here that's highlighted in red, you to awake. And then we have toki. This is just the time. So the time when you awaken o お待ちしていたのです。We have waited. So this is a pretty long sentence, right? We can see that we have continued to take over each other, replacing the roles throughout generations since ancient times, waiting for you to awaken. So they've been waiting for a really long time. If we have initie no jidai yori, since ancient times, this could potentially be thousands of years, right? A really long time. That makes it really creepy how they were just staring, <laughs> waiting. To wake up. You'd have to get bored of that eventually, right? Just waiting. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> For thousands of years. <laughs> Is that how they wait? Man, pretty creepy group we got here. <laughs> Nani se. Iahaya here is just an interjection to be like, oh dear, good gracious, right? So, oh my. Iahaya, honto ni odorokimashita. I'm truly surprised. Nani se. Anyhow, or at any rate. So, mm, yes, I am truly surprised. At any rate. Iahaya, honto ni odorokimashita. Nani se. Shodai ryu no moribito no jidai yori, jizni sen nen mono toki ga tatte iru no desu kara. Oh, geez, and yes, it does definitely look like it's been a long time, as I was guessing. Here we have Shodai. So, Sho is expressing the very first and Dai generation. So, the first generation, right? The founder. Shodai, so the very, very original. Ryu no Moribito, so the very original dragon defenders no Jidai Yori. Since the age of the very first generation of dragon defenders. Jitsuni, this is kind of like indeed, really, or actually. So I kind of see this as actually Jitsuni. Sennen, a millennia or a thousand years. The first kanji is for a thousand and then the second is for years. Sennen, a thousand years. Mo, so even a thousand years. No Toki, the time of even a thousand years ga tateiru. Tatsu is an N3 piece of language to express the passing of time. So here, jikan ga tateiru means that time is passing. So even a thousand years have passed. No des kara. So no des is the same as nda, it's explaining that something is the case, and then kara is because. So he's expressing here why he's so surprised because ever since the original first generation dragon protectors have been waiting over a thousand years for this moment. Yeah, so she's pretty surprised at that. Sennen, a thousand years. Watashi wa, as for me, Sennen no Aida. Aida here expresses a duration of time. How long? Sennen no Aida, a thousand years time. And then we have Nemutte ita no desu ka? And Nemuru is to sleep. So here to be asleep for over a thousand years. Sennen no Aida, Nemutte ita no desu ka? Have I been sleeping for a thousand years? Okay, it's official. This game has some pretty challenging language. Here we have a piece of language that I've personally never seen before. Haha gimme. So these are two pretty useful pieces of language, haha and kun or kimi, right? Those two are totally, totally common, but to see them used together is incredibly rare. I've never seen it used like this. And this is an honorific but dated way of referring to one's mother. So we can see top 62,000 in anime and drama. This is very rare. And perhaps you might see this in like some sort of taiga drama, like a samurai, um, an, a period film set back in the olden days. This is kind of set in the days of nights and kings and things like that, perhaps that's why they've chosen to use this word. So this is a very rare honorific way of referring to one's mother, haha gimi. Then we have a little bit of new language, or. This represents the king. So Shinryu o means the king of these guardian dragons, these divine dragons, right? Shinryu o, and then the name of the king of these god dragons, these divine dragons, is Rumi Eru-sama. 
And so that right there is the King of the God Dragons, <laughs> or the Ruler of the Divine Dragons, perhaps is another way you could translate this. Then mo means even, so even Rumieru, kono toki o, so this time, doing something to this time, machi wabite orare mashita. Oh my god, <laughs> tough piece of language. And machi wabiru is here to be tired of waiting or to wait impatiently. Now, this English translation doesn't really express the proper feeling of what is actually being done here. It makes this character, Rumieru, feel like they're really, come on, hurry up, wake up, <laughs> right? To be tired of waiting. So let's have a look at the Japanese. Japanese definition and see how this is actually used. So we can see one definition here from goo.net.jp saying that machi wabiru is when you've been waiting for a very long time worrying about something, right? So to kind of be anxiously waiting. So not necessarily like waiting in kind of a grumpy way, but just waiting in kind of a worried way, right? Really, oh, oh, I hope it happens soon, that type of thing. And that's what's being expressed here with the machi wabite. And then it's machi wabite orare mashita. We know now that oru is in replacement of iru, whenever you want to have the continuous form. Right? So here, machi wabite iru would be machi wabite oru. But orare mashita, again, here is passive. <laughs> Speaking in Keigo, I'm saying that she has been waiting, right? So she's been waiting for this time, for a very long time. She's been waiting anxiously. Hi. Okay, this guy's a little bit tough when it comes to Japanese for sure. So we have Shinryu no Ozoku. Ozoku is the word for royalty in Japanese, very useful piece of language, especially for fantasy RPGs. Zoku is kind of like the tribe of something, so the tribe of kings, royalty, right? Ozoku Taru. Taru is used after a noun to express those who are that noun, so those who are royalty. Ozoku taru anata-sama, so you who is royalty, no mezame wa, as for the awakening of you whose royalty is awakening. Kono sekai, kono means this, and then sekai is the world that we live in. So in this world, ni totte, as far as dun 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 is concerned, or from the standpoint of. So this is a pretty useful piece of language. I believe it may be at the N4, N3 level. It's very useful, even though it's not written here. Um, so from the standpoint of something, from the viewpoint of something, from the viewpoint of this world, kono sekai ni totte, so for the world, okina shirase. Okina is a special type of adjective here known as a pre-noun adjectival. So normally oki is an e adjective, but here it's actually kind of like a na adjective. Uh, this is a bit complicated, but this just means that this e adjective right now is being used as a na adjective. So okina shirase. So okina here, a big something, and then we have shirase. This means news. Now normally you see the first kanji being used, one that's biggest right now, shiru to no shirase for news, notification, information, something like that. But here he's using the smaller one. This is a little bit more rarer, the shirase. And this is often used for information. This is the same kanji from joho for information. So here shirase is being used like that. It's expressing this information that's being, you know, very, very important for this world. So, okina shirase tonaru desho. Tonaru is to become and desho is right. So the awakening of you who is royalty, the divine dragon, will be very big news for the world. Matekurasai. So Matsu is to wait, Matekurasai, please wait. Then we have Shindu o so the divine dragon king Rumieru, so the divine dragon king Rumieru, Sorega, as for that, Watashi no haha nano deska. So we only have one new piece of language in this whole sentence, and that is haha. Now, haha is a pretty simple piece of language just to mean one's mother. However, one thing that I think gets perhaps portrayed or a little bit expressed incorrectly uh, for many learners is that they might learn that this is the word for mother. It's true, you can use this to refer to your mother, but this is actually a polite way to refer to your mother. The normal way would just be like okasan or something like that, right? But here, haha, as we can see, is actually humble speech, kenjogo. 
So we can see here that haha is what you use in polite speech. Perhaps you're in some sort of business, right? Perhaps you're in a workplace or with people that you're not necessarily super close with. This is how you would refer to your mother in polite speech. So for one's own mother, sore ga watashi no haha na no desu ka? Is that my mother? If she wanted to say this in a bit more casual way, she could say watashi no kaasan or watashi no kaachan or something like that. Matte kudasai. Shinryu o Lumieru. Sore ga watashi no haha na no desu ka? Sore ni Shinryu no ozoku te watashi ga Oh, and again, just one piece of language we don't know. Sore ni Shinryu no ozoku te watashi ga so the first piece of language is sore ni, besides, in addition, also, moreover. So in addition, this is a piece of language that you would use perhaps at the beginning of a sentence to kind of add to whatever you previously said, in addition or besides. Sore ni, besides. Shinryu no ozokute. So the thing of being the royalty of these divine dragons. Watashi ga? I'm... Sore ni, shinryu no ozokute. Watashi ga? Shinryu sama. Shinryu-sama, the divine dragon, Moshiya. Moshiya means perhaps or by some chance. So here he's having some sort of guess at something. Moshiya, go jibun no koto. Jibun means one's self. So go jibun no koto, about one's self. We can also see that it can be used to talk about you as well, right? So about you. Right? But about oneself, about yourself, about myself, it can be used in all of these different ways. It really depends on the context, which one it's actually referring to. But here it's talking about the girl, right? So, Shinryu-sama, Moshiya, go jibun no koto o. So perhaps something to do with yourself. Oboete irashara nai no desu ka? Oboeru is to remember something. Very useful piece of language at the N5 level. And then we have oboete irashara nai no desu ka? So this guy uses a lot of keigo. This game is going to be amazing for your keigo practice for sure. Your um, polite speech right here. It's very, very useful for honorific speech. Irasharu is an N4 piece of language to mean here in definition number two, to be doing. This is song keigo after the te form, here being the way of saying suru, to do. So son keigo is when you're talking about someone else's actions. We've seen kenjo go when you're talking about your actions and you put yourself down, you humble yourself. Here, son keigo is when you're referring to someone else's actions and you put their actions up in terms of honorifics. Sounds complicated, but you definitely get used to it over time. Here, he's putting her actions. He's speaking about her actions, so he's putting it up. So here, oboite irashara nai no desu ka? Do you not remember? Shinryu-sama, moshi ya go jibun no koto wo oboite irashara nai no desu ka? Na wa oboite imasu. Demo, sore igai no koto wa nani mo? Oh, we're so close to knowing all of the language in this sentence. Na wa oboite imasu. So na is the short way of saying your name. Oboite imasu, I remember. So I remember my name. Demo. However, sore igai no koto wa nani mo. Sore just means that. Sore igai, except for that. This is a very useful piece of language for the exception of excluding something. So excluding that, excluding remembering my name. So sore igai no koto wa, as for excluding that thing, nani mo. And nani mo means nothing at all. Now it's usually connected to a verb in the nai form, in the negative form, and so this dot 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 is kind of expressing that she hasn't finished her sentence. We're seeing this a lot in this game. So perhaps she says nani mo oboite nai. I don't remember anything. That's probably what's following on, but she doesn't want to keep repeating what she says, because it's pretty clear. I remember my name, but uh, nothing else. So e is showing surprise at something. So sore that te is quoting something, so quoting what the girl just said. And then we have this interesting piece of language that's quite useful for a lot of anime drama, a very common theme that's used in storytelling. Kyoku soshitsu, a loss of memory. 
or amnesia. So this is the word for amnesia, like for example, for any character ever in history that loses their mind, they don't remember who they are, fight club type thing, <laughs> memento type thing, right? Um, Kyoku Soshitsu, spoiler alert, sorry, <laughs> so random. Kyoku Soshitsu here is for amnesia, right? So here, this is the word, the character has forgotten who they are. The character has forgotten everything about themselves except for their name. This is a pretty common thing that happens. I've almost every Fire Emblem I've played, this happens, except for some of the really old ones. So here, Kyoku Soshitsu te Yatsu de wa. So as for that thing called amnesia, perhaps that's what's going on. Eh? So, so te Kyoku Soshitsu te Yatsu de wa? Moshikashite, nemuri tsuzuketa heigai na no de shou ka? Moshikashite. Perhaps by some chance, if I'm not mistaken. So this is another piece of language to express that you're kind of making some sort of guess, but a guess that's kind of something that's based on information that she has in her head, right? She's taking some sort of guess at something. So if I'm not mistaken is kind of connected in this way. Moshikashite. Nemuri tsuzuketa heigai. We know nemuri means to sleep, nemuru. Nemuri tsuzuketa means to have continued sleeping. And then we have this one piece of language that we're not sure of, heigai. This means some sort of harmful effect. So a harmful effect of having slept for so long. Nemuri tsuzuketa heigai nano de shouka. So nano des is explaining it is that, but then de shouka is kind of like making a guess. I suppose. So if by chance, I suppose, perhaps it's some sort of harmful effect of having slept for so long. So watashiwa as for me, ittai is like what on earth. This is often used when you're kind of making some sort of guess about something, but it's a very emphatic guess, like what in the world, what the hell, that type of thing, right? So. What happened to me, right? Watashi wa ittai. What in the world? Watashi wa ittai. Daijoubu desu. Kitto o mezame ni natta bakari de mada konran shite irashcharu no desu yo. Daijoubu desu. Kitto o mezame ni natta bakari de mada konran shite irashcharu no desu yo. So, daijoubu desu just means that's all right. Daijoubu is to be safe, secure, and all right. So, it's all right. Don't worry. Daijoubu desu. Kitto. Certainly or surely, as we can see, it has like a 90% certainty. So I'm sure, kito, o mezame ni natta bakari de. Bakari de expresses having just done something. So you've just woken up, o mezame ni natta bakari de. And the de acts as kind of a comma. So you need to follow something afterwards. So you only just woken up, mada, still. Konran shite irasharu. So shite irasharu, we know, is the song keigo way of referring to someone else's actions. So you doing an action. But then we have konran. This means disorder or chaos or perhaps some sort of confusion. So I'm certain that you've only just woken up and you're still kind of confused. Daijoubu desu. Kito, o mezame ni natta bakkari de. Mada konran shite irasharu no desu yo. It's all right. I'm sure that because you just woke up, you're still a little bit confused. And then he says, Yoroshi desu ka? Anata sama wa shinryu. So Yoroshi is a new piece of language. Here being an honorific Songkeigo version of Yoi to be good. So good, okay, all right, fine. This is the Songkego way of saying this. So yoroshi desu ka? Are you okay? Anata sama wa shinryu. You are the divine dragon. And then we have the second sentence. Kono sekai de kami to agamerare ru ryu no ozoku desu. Kono sekai de, so in this world, kami to Kami means a god, a very important piece of language. Here talking about a god, but it can also be something, for example, something that's incredible or fantastic. Uh, you actually see sometimes, for example, like a Kami game, right? Kami ge or Kami game. This means a game that's like god tier, right? That type of thing. It's used in the same way in Japanese. So here, kono sekai de, in this world, Kami to, as a god, agame rareru which is the passive form of agameru, to respect or to worship. So you are respected, you are worshipped as a god. Kami to agamerareru ryu no ozoku. 
So the royal dragons who are respected and worshipped as gods in this world. So if we put it all together, are you okay? You are the divine dragon, the dragon royalty that is worshipped in this world as gods. Sosite means and Anatasama you no hahagimi your mother wa as for. So and also as for your mother. Sechi Ritosu. So se means holy and chi represents the ground, the land. So this is the holy land, a sacred place, Sechi. And the name of this sacred place is Ritosu. So the holy lands of Ritosu. O Suberu Shinryu o Rumieru sama. And so the final piece of language that we don't know here is Suberu. This means to rule over, to govern, to command, to control over. So here the divine dragon king, Lumieru, that rules over these holy lands, Ritosu. And who are we talking about? Anata-sama no hahagimi wa, as for your mother. So your mother is the one that rules over these holy lands. So anata-sama no hahagimi wa, seichi Ritosu wo suberu shinryu wo Lumieru sama. Sen nen mai ni okita sensou de aku no genkyou taru jaryu wo fuin shita idai na okata. Senen mai ni okita senso de. So senen we know means a thousand years. Mae, this means before or ago. So how long ago before? Senen mai, a thousand years before. Ni here is marking when this action was done. The action was done a thousand years ago. Okita senso. Now we've learnt okidu can mean to wake up, but in this situation it's actually definition number three to occur. So it doesn't just have to be to wake up, it can also be for something to occur. Here, okita senso. The war that occurred a thousand years ago. De. So in this war that occurred a thousand years ago, and then we have the second sentence. Aku means evil. This is the opposite of Zen, meaning good. Genkyo here is a pretty rare piece of language meaning the ringleader in something, the main culprit, right? So this evil ringleader, Taru, they who are, and then Jaryu. This is a difficult piece of language right here, but Ja means evil, and then Ryu means a dragon. And you can often see it used written like in the picture above, Jaryu. That's also another kanji for dragon. So this is some sort of evil dragon. So we can now see that there are both the divine dragons, Shinryu, and we have the evil dragons, Jaryu. Jaryu o, so doing something to the evil dragons, and then we have this piece of language, Fuin shita. This is to seal. So Fuin suru is to seal something. It could just be like sealing a letter, but here it's actually like sealing away the magical powers of the evil dragon. So Jaryu o, Fuin shita idai na okata. Idai is a na adjective to be grand or magnificent, and then idai na okata. This is again a songkego way of referring to somebody else. Here, talking about another person, someone that's very, very important, like a lady or a gentleman, and we can see honorific songkego. So idai na okata, a very grand person. So what is this talking about? This is talking about the mother that he just mentioned previously, my mother. So he's saying that my mother, in the war that happened a thousand years ago, she is a great individual. Who sealed away the evil dragon? Ten years ago, in the war that happened, the evil dragon sealed away the evil dragon. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Just one of the few of us. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Just one of the few of us. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Just one of the few of us. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Just one of the few of us. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Just one of the few of us. You, my mother, are the evil dragon of Lumiere. Tata means merely or only, and hitori is one person, so just one person, only one, no miko. And miko is the son of a god, or the child of a god, that type of thing. So here, tata hitori no miko, so you are the only child of that divine dragon ruler, Lumieru. Anata sama wa sono shinryu o Lumieru sama no tata hitori no miko na no desu. Senso, jaryu. Senso, war, Jaryu, the evil dragon. Nanika, omoidashi so na no ni, 
Nanika means something. Omoidasu, this means to remember. Omoidashi so means I seem to be able to remember. Nano ni, and yet, despite that, so despite the fact that I seem to be able to remember something, atama ni, in my head. So atama for your head, and then ni is marking where this action takes place, and the action here is moya ga kakatte iru yo desu. Moya means like a haze or a mist, and then moya ga kakaru means that it like kind of covered in haze or mist. So it's something is hazy or misty. Here with moya ga kakatte iru. And then again, your desk, it appears to be. So putting it all together, war, evil dragons. Despite being able to feel like I'm just about to be able to remember something, my head seems to be all misty and foggy. Senso, Jaryu. <laughs> Best episode for Keigo ever. Moody has a lot of different ways that it can be used, but in this situation, it kind of means to do too much. Closest to definition number five, to work too hard or to try too hard. Moody or Nasaru. Can you guess? Nasaru is Song Keigo. Here, this is honorific speech for to do. Suru. So when you're talking about someone else's actions, suru, this is the honorific way of referring to their actions. Muri o suru, to do too much, but he's talking about her actions, so muri o nasaru. Remember, this is because he's talking to someone way above him, right? Someone really high up in kind of the social order standings, and this is why he's using songkeigo. This is literally a god, but this could also be used in situations like business, right? When someone talks to an honored customer or an honored business partner or something like that, right? You're really putting them way above you. Muri o nasaru koto wa gozaimasen. Gozaimasen is just the honorific way of saying nai, right? Nai arimasen gozaimasen. That's kind of the tier of politeness or honorifics, right? So koto wa gozaimasen is exactly the same as koto wa nai. There's no need to. So, muri o nasaru koto wa gozaimasen is a very, very formal keigo way of saying muri o suru koto wa nai. There's no need to do too much. Kitto, we know, means surely. Suguni, this means immediately or right away. And then omoi dasaremas is the passive way of saying that you will remember. So I'm sure that you will remember soon. Kitto, suguni omoi dasaremas. Nanise. Anatasama wa kami to itsutairare shi. Nanise, at any rate, anatasama, you, wa, as for you, kami to, as a god, and then we have itsutairare. So itsutairu is very simply just to hand down, to pass on information. Itsutairu, i is to say, and then stairu is to kind of like to convey, to pass on. So to convey or pass on something that's been said. As in, like a legend or something like that. Here, to spread the word of, to circulate, to hand down the story of. Anata sama wa kami to itsutairare. So the story has been handed down that you are a god. She is kind of like what's more or not only, but it also has this feeling of like because. So because, you know, it's been handed down in the story, it's been handed down that you are a god. Totoki o kata. Totoki here is a very high level piece of language, N1, that means precious, noble, exalted, sacred, that type of thing. Very high level. I don't see this too often. So, Totoi is the one that we'd normally see. Totoki is even more uh, kind of older way of talking. Totoki o kata, again, so this lady or gentleman that is very precious, very sacred. So if we put it all together, I'm sure that you will remember soon. At any rate, you are the god that is known around the lands as someone that's very precious. Koki here means high class or noble. Koki de, so this is like a comma, you are noble and yasashiku. So this is again the same thing in the kind of te form, but the te form for e adjectives. Yasashi here means kind or gentle. So you are a noble, a high class individual who is gentle or kind. Yasashiku de. Think of this as like a comma, you're kind and buyu ni sugure. 
Buyu here is for bravery, military prowess, or valor. Bu represents the military, and the Yu is seen like in Yukan for bravery, so military bravery, that type of thing. Buyu ni sugure. Sugureru is to excel or to surpass at something, so to do something really well. And here, what do we do really well is marked with the ni particle. Buyu ni sugure. So you excel in military prowess, military bravery. Dono yona teki ni mo. Dono yona means what kind of. Teki, here for an opponent or an enemy. Ni mo, also with. So even with any kind of enemy. O sore zu. O sore ru is to fear something. Zu is without, so without fearing. Yukan ni tachimukata. Yukan is an N1 piece of language to express being brave or heroic. So we saw this yu previously in the buyu, right? For military bravery, military prowess. But here, yukan, just the word by itself, this is the word for bravery or heroism or things like that. So yukan ni tachimukata. Tachimukao is to fight against, to oppose something. And what are we opposing? This is marked previously with teki ni mo. So even at any kind of enemy. Dono yona teki ni mo tachimukata. You faced against any kind of enemy. And how did you face against them? Osorezu yukan ni. Without fear, bravely. To kiki o yonde orimasu. So to is quilting, and then kiki o yobu, this is a pretty rare piece of language to hear of or to learn something. Normally, kiku is just to hear something, right? Kita, very, very normal way of saying I heard something. This is a bit more of a rare way, a little bit more of an older way here, to hear of, to learn of. Kiki o yobu. And then we see with orimasu, this is the kenjogo, the humble way of saying teiru. I have heard that you're a very kind, high-class person who excels in military prowess and stands up bravely without fear against any enemy. She's a bit surprised that he says such nice things about her and she says, Sonnani desu ka? So sonnani is like to that extent, and then deska is it really? So really to that extent? And then she's being a little bit modest here and she says, uwasa ni ohire ga tsuitemasen. So uwasa here is the word for a rumor, very useful piece of language, N3 level, uwasa, for a rumor. Uwasa ni, so in the rumors. And then we have this kind of rare piece of language, ohire ga tsuku. This means to be exaggerated or to be embellished. And what is being embellished here? Uasa, right? The knee particle is marking what is being embellished. So here it's kind of like, hasn't it just been exaggerated in rumors? For now, Hitomazu. Ritosu no Ojo ni Mairimasenuka. So, Ritosu no Ojo, Ojo here is a royal castle, and it's the castle of Ritosu. So, Ritosu no Ojo ni, to the royal castle of Ritosu, Mairimasenu ka? Mairu here is the Kenjogo, the humble way of saying to go or to come. So, this can replace Iku or Kuru, to go or to come, in humble speech. Masenuka is the same as Masenka, but this is just a bit of an older way. You'll often see this new form as instead of nai. So shall we not go to the castle? Maidu is also seen in lots of other pieces of language, not just here in humble speech. For example, in the fifth definition, to visit a shrine or grave, Hakamaidi. This is a super common piece of language in Japanese culture and society. Every single time there's Obon, right in the middle part of the year in summer, this is when people usually do their family Hakamaidi, when they visit other family shrines and graves. But here it's just being used as the humble way to say to go. So for the time being, shall we not go to Ritosu Imperial Castle? And then we have the second line, Rumieru sama ni genki na o sugato o misese neba. So Rumieru sama, we know that's the mother that we're talking about, Rumieru. Genki na o sugata. Genki means to be lively in spirits. Sugata is the figure, the form, the shape, or the appearance of something. So your healthy, lively appearance, like you in a lively way, or 
miseru is to show. The o prefix is put in the beginning to kind of make it honorific. So he's talking about your actions. O mise seneba. And seneba is just short for seneba naranai, meaning you ought to do something, you have to do something, or you should do something. So here, we ought to show your mother your Genki spirited self. Next, we have Atte o Hanashi o Sureba. So, the first piece of language, Ao. So, Ao here just means to meet. Atte. So, you meet and then do something else. The te form here is acting as a comma. So, we do this first action, Atte. We meet. And then, o hanashi o sureba. Hanashi suru is just to have a talk. O hanashi o suru is just to hear a bit more polite, keigo way of talking. So, o hanashi o sureba. This is like if we have a talk. The ba form indicates this kind of if. It's like a hypothetical. So, atte o hanashi o sureba. If we meet and then have a talk. Nanika, something. Omoi das koto mo gozaimashou. Omoi das is to remember koto mo aru. Here, gozaimasu, as we've seen already many times, this is the polite tenego way of saying aru, to exist. Gozaimasu. Kotomo aru means there is also something. So kotomo gozaimasu means there is also something. It's just the keigo way of saying it. So nanika omoidas kotomo gozaimashou. I'm sure that there'll be something that you'll remember when we meet and have a talk. Atte o hanashi o sureba, nanika omoidas kotomo gozaimashou. Wakarimashita. Understood. So to kimareba, sasoku shupatsu desu ne. So the first piece of language we have is so, and this means in that way. So so to kimareba, kimaru is to be decided. This is an intransitive. It means it's something that is done without a clear actor, right? It has been decided. If it's been decided in that way, so to kimareba. Sasoku, immediately, at once. This is an N2 piece of language to express doing something straight away, without delay. So if it's been decided in that way, Sasoku, immediately, shupatsu. And this is a super useful piece of language to express setting off, departing. Now, I'm not sure why this isn't ranked in the JLPT. I think it should be. This is perhaps one of the most fundamental pieces of language I've seen that hasn't had a JLPT ranking. Shupatsu is the word when you depart, when you leave off, when you set off. This is the word you use. Um, trains shupatsu from their station. They depart from their station. This is a very essential piece of Japanese, to depart. So if it's been decided Decided in that way, let's set off right away. And then Desne is just kind of asking for confirmation, right? So, Ritosu no Shinryu Ojo, we know that word, that just means the royal castle of the dragon god Ritosu, or the divine dragon of Ritosu. Now, E. Eh. This is actually the first time we've seen this very useful particle right here. This particle, e, so it's written he, but pronounced e. This marks the direction of action. So this shows very much clearly the direction in which we're about to go, right? We're heading to the Imperial Castle. This e particle is all focused on the direction of movement to the castle. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop there because I think this is probably already over an hour long. It's probably close to an hour already, this episode. It was quite a big one. We've covered a lot of difficult Japanese. The next episode, we're going to be going through the field and actually we're going to be having one of our first battles. So the next episode is a much more interesting episode than this current one. This one was pretty fun, but we learnt some really tough language that's going to help us out for the rest of this game or for however long we do this series. So I will be doing a next episode here and I will be doing lots of other games as well. Now that it's much more easier for me to make this vocab series, I'm gonna be making this a lot more frequently. It still requires a lot of work. It still takes a couple of days for me to really just focus only on this, but it's much better than a couple of weeks like it was before. So I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. I'm having an absolute blast. I'm gonna be making lots more content this year. This year is gonna be absolutely insane. Now I will be making an announcement soon about the release of the game game Gengo website where I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff related to Game Gengo, recommended games, game scripts. It's going to be kind of a hub 
for everything Game Gengo related, as well as Game Gengo merchandise and how to join up on things like Patreon and stuff like that, just making a centralized hub finally for Game Gengo. I'm also going to make a video soon kind of showing off what my plans are for 2023, what my schedule is going to be, but generally speaking I'm going to be looking at making about two videos a week. One kind of vocab related video, whether it's the vocab series or a character series, and then one grammar style video, which is more looking at like the N3 grammar or the N2 grammar or the Genki series. So at the bare minimum, I'm looking at making two videos a week, but I'm probably going to make as absolutely as much as humanly possible. Just sometimes it may take longer or shorter, depending on how big the video is. So if you like this video and you want to see more of Fire Emblem Engage, make sure to leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, and come join us on the Game Gingo Discord community on Patreon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's a lot more coming. Huge thank you to all the supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the channel. You guys are the reason that I'm able to do this full time and work as hard as I can, making as much enjoyable learning Japanese content as humanly possible so thanks so much guys for all of your support and as always i'll see you all again in the next video see ya まったく二人とも想像し、お目覚めになったなどそのような嘘。神竜様、これは奇跡だ。よもや本当にお目覚めになられているとは。ああ、その目が開かれている玉眼を。私の代で拝見する栄養を賜れるなどあなたは申し訳ございませんつい取り乱してしまいまして私は第三十二代目となる龍の森人名をバンドレと申しますバンドレさんなんて恐れ多いどかバンドレとお呼びくださいねバンド
記憶喪失ってやつではもしかして眠り続けた弊害なのでしょうか私は一体大丈夫ですきっとお目覚めになったばかりでまだ混乱していらっしゃるのですよよろしいですかあなた様は新竜この世界で神と崇められる竜の王族ですそしてあなた様の母君は聖地リトスを滑る新竜王ルミエル様千年前に起きた戦争で悪の元凶たる蛇竜を封印した偉大なお方あなた様はその新竜王ルミエル様のたった一人の巫女なのです戦争蛇竜何か思い出しそうなのに頭にもやがかかっているようです無理をなさることはございませんきっとすぐに思い出されます何せあなた様は神と言い伝えられし尊きお方後期で優しく武勇に優れどのような敵にも恐れず勇敢に立ち向かったと聞き及んでおりますそんなにですか噂に尾ひれがついてませんひとまずリトスの王城に参りませんかルミエル様に元気なお姿をお見せせねば会ってお話をすれば何か思い出すこともございましょうわかりましたそうと決まれば早速出発ですねリトスの新竜王